Here we have the latest uh, tracking chart from uh, Super Cyclone Eta, uh, Category 5 up there. Uh, tracking towards the, the Queensland coast down here towards uh, Cape Flattery and Cooktown tomorrow. So um, as you can see both Cape Flattery and Cooktown are in the, uh, in the circle of maximum winds uh, through to Laura, direct hit on Laura at this stage. Uh, anything can happen, they, they don't run on rails. Um, it, could, it could come right down the coast to Cairns. None of this is known as yet. But uh, with me I have renowned climate scientist from the James Cook University, Professor Jonathan Knott, who will give us a bit of a rundown on what we're going to expect tomorrow. Very, very strong winds, at this stage potentially stronger than Yazi was. Uh, people who are on the coast need to be prepared for quite a decent sized storm surge and uh, waves attacking the coast, so we could see a major uh, marine inundation, storm inundation and also extremely strong winds in a very, very powerful system. So in a nutshell, what should people be doing who are watching this right now? They need to be securing their yards, they need to be bringing in all things that could possibly end up as flying debris, they need to be uh, making sure that they've got plenty of water, batteries, radio ready, all of their emergency provisions need to be uh, they're fueling up their cars, everything that we've always been told to do in a tropical cyclone they really need to be doing right at this very moment. So really hope for the best but plan for the worst? Absolutely, that's the best way of saying it I think, hope for the best and plan for the worst, yes. What is the worst case scenario with this thing? If it tracked a bit further south, hits Cairns, what are we looking at? If it tracked further south and hit Cairns, uh, this one has the potential to probably uh, damage very, very severely, if not destroy, up to 50% of the dwellings, the home dwellings in Cairns. We would have to have a major evacuation of both public hospitals well beforehand. Uh, that would require the military coming in, and whether there's enough time now to do that, I'm not too sure. Um, it would require, it would see a lot of beachfront properties very, very badly damaged, both from storm surge and from wind. Now, isn't this something you've been telling people to expect for years? This is not a very common occurrence, is it? It isn't a common occurrence and I have been telling them that these sorts of systems are entirely possible, that we need to be prepared for them and we need to stop allowing buildings so close to sea level and uh, people just basically ignore that and think that it won't happen to them and uh, uh, so they, they just carry on anyway. But uh, as we can see these systems are real, they occur, we've got one occurring right now, at the moment it isn't forecast to come into Cairns, but there's no reason why another one of these can't occur next year or the year after and be on a direct path for Cairns like Cooktown is at this time. So just a little bit of an overview of what are we going to be doing tomorrow? We're going to head up to Cooktown. Our aim is to go up there and uh, collect rainwater out of this tropical cyclone. We use that rainwater and we study it uh, for its isotope chemistry. Uh, that isotope chemistry can give us vital information about uh, cyclones of the past because we use that isotope chemistry in limestone stalagmites uh, where we can get long-term records, thousands of years of records on an annual basis and we can understand the patterns of cyclones over time and uh, it gives us an idea of the natural variability of cyclones and allows us to determine whether global climate change is actually starting to affect cyclones as has been forecast by global climate change modelers. And just lastly, how difficult do you expect it's going to be to collect rainwater at th when 300 km an hour winds? I think it's probably going to be very, very challenging, but we're up for a challenge and uh, we'll, we'll work out a way at the time to be able to do this, but uh, we're determined and we'll be very safe, of course, at the same time. Um, but uh, we do have a, a scientific mission to go into this. We're not just uh, being uh, foolish here. We've actually gone to collect data and that data is going to be very useful to help uh, better understand cyclones, better predict their behaviour in the future and therefore better prepare and save communities in the future. Yeah. Looks like Cooktown is going to get into the zone of uh, very destructive winds by the look of it, just on the edge of it at the moment, but this track could shift a bit by tomorrow morning, so um, uh, we don't really know where it's going, but certainly uh, Cooktown, Cape Flattery look to be in the major impact zones and then inland from there, Laura certainly looks to be on a direct path for the cyclone at the present time.